What's up everyone, it's Jan Boris, new video, and today I'm going to talk about the odds at Eurovision, the most passionate topic all time. I'm not sure if it's the only passion, like who's gonna win, can we trust the odds? Can odds take the passion from us because it's kind of a clear who's gonna win, who's gonna qualify, and so on. And you know, I dig through another statistics again, and it's very interesting. Let's talk. All right guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm very glad you're here. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, buy me a coffee, give me a super like, comment in the comments below. This is the most important now, because now let's take our passions off a little bit, because this video won't be about who I think will qualify, win, and so on. It's more about what the odds are saying and how much we can trust them. Disclaimer number one, now the odds are, in my opinion, a little bit irrelevant. They change completely in the way when closer to the to the semi-finals and finals because of the rehearsals because of the live performances out they're not really relevant for music videos because now we can see the tendencies of country pushing their songs and so on and so on which doesn't really reflect the reality now especially now when we have the only odds who will win eurovision song contest which is not about the order because there is for example germany on 32 place we know that it can be even the worst 26th for example so don't really take it ultra seriously but what i want to talk about now it's about the quality of the odds because now so many betting companies are putting odds and on eurovisionworld.com which is in my opinion the best page for eurovision if you want to know everything and this goes with the percentage of winning chance for example now croatia has 21 percent chance ukraine 12 percent chance but it doesn't matter first of all those differences are not huge and those differences will also change for example in 2021 when arcade won with duncan lawrence or 2019 actually where duncan lawrence won he won with 51% chance of winning, right? Of course, this was before the show, the, the odds were changing, so it's not like a reflection of, of the odds now, but 51% of winning chance and Mahmoud from Italy, 9% chance of winning. The odds were right, Duncan Lawrence won, but he won by difference of 26 points, 26 points, but the difference in the odds, 51% to nine, do you know? so. This is not that relevant. Also, what I found out that the odds are not really good in predicting the order of how the countries will end up eventually. Of course, they can kind of predict the who's gonna win, but then who's gonna be second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. They are not that really good in it. It's like very, very shifting. But I did a little bit of different math and I was just checking the public votes because now we care about who's gonna qualify, right? So I was like, how correct, how close the closest odds are close to real results just based on public vote so who would qualify if only public would be able to vote which is a new thing from year 2023 last eurovision but back then before it was public and juries and basically they do almost no mistakes it's like one mistake per semi-final for example last year they did one mistake per two semi-finals one mistakes it was one mistaken output the years before it was sometimes two to one difference not 100 percent but and it always was about the last places so 10th and 11 or 10th and 9 sometimes who, who have odd nine place for example I, I don't know if you can see it actually doesn't matter in the odds Malta would qualify, right? But it didn't. And Azerbaijan qualified, but it wouldn't. In 2022, they received zero points from public, but jury saved them. The odds were pretty Malta will go through, but it wouldn't. But actually, it wouldn't even buy public votes. Who they won there, public expected Cyprus, but also no, the odds put them there. But by the odds, Cyprus would qualify, you know? Also, Romania, by the odds, wouldn't qualify and qualified and really high. So in this case, they completely mismatched the number of points such songs could receive. We are talking about two mistakes per semifinal, one to two. And then this is the crazy stuff that when you watch the odds, when they will release it for semifinal one and semifinal two this year, it will show us eight potential qualifiers for sure. Probably the countries from the first, like first five places, more likely always, probably six, probably seven. And then the rest is somehow fighting for being there with the other rest. And then it comes to the interests, to 
another type of quality. For example, Romania received 100 points from public, catapulted it to the fifth place from, for public vote with Yamame, but it wouldn't qualify normally, right? Because in, uh, in the odds it was 12. 12 is still the thing, so in my opinion, they can really pinpoint something what I did in my video where I put the fake points but expected points from my calculations to the countries which are kind of realistic numbers but doesn't mean that it's a realistic result, right? But this is the same with the odds, like I believe that the mistakes of mathematics at Eurovision nowadays are close to zero or it's like there is 80% chance you are correct on qualifiers. You probably wouldn't be correct in the placing if the country qualifies from first place second place third place but the crazy thing about it and this is the really crazy thing is that the countries who are now very low in the odds if they won't perform extremely well in semi-finals or in before semi-finals in this period of pre-parties and semi-finals their chances are limited to like very very low numbers because first of all they already re reflect the state of interest about the, such songs, such countries, such artists. They already show this. So this is one proof that community doesn't care and community, even though its power is very limited in voting, it still has voting power and it can push those niche little community things up. But the worst starting position is for the countries who are now below 30. This is in my opinion the hardest task and they should alert themselves and do like crazy marketing about it because after all semi-finals is a lot about marketing. A lot. If you, if people know you, if they know your story, if they know something good about you and we are not talking about community, I think it's very important to really catch the viewers. They will put you some votes. They may be, if they will be, because if they will be thinking, well, will I send this last SMS or second to last SMS, two SMS to some other country where I spend my money, they will send to the country which they have some relationship with or the artist they have some relationship with, some good story, some good uh, memory, uh, song repeated in the radio, whatever. And I think this is the task of the marketing of those artists or those televisions because if they are fighting for the last places they fight for every single point the difference from the 9 to 10 can be 20 points 30 points 40 points it will be shorter probably this year so every single sms can count and this is what they are fighting for because the the strong countries they are safe like first six eight countries let's say for example countries from semi-final one who are safe would be for sure ukraine croatia lithuania finland serbia slovenia probably or poland the rest, they are fighting for every single point and it counts for Australia, Luxembourg, Iceland and Portugal and Cyprus. Every single two points more can make you to the finals. Of course, this is nothing new, but how you will reach the points? You will reach them only by creating some nice portfolio backstory of you in those countries where you don't expect points because as I say, you will put your points to first five, say like, I love it, I like it, I like it, but hmm, who to put those? Like I have them, you know, I, I'm not doing a scoreboard like this is my number 10. Most of people don't do it. And they, when they will be thinking like, hey, I would put my points to that or that or this country, they would put to the country they have some relationship with a good one because of this artist deserve it. I know it, I know this artist more. I understand the message of the song or something. But if you're indifferent, and maybe it's a sad thing, but it's a marketing era, and this is something what in semifinals is the most important, especially when juries are not here because you don't have a safe net at all. You need to do marketing. Without marketing, you have no chance, in my opinion. Like, if you underestimate this, part, you have no chance and I wouldn't concentrate on fan base because fan base don't really care about this because they are already kind of predecided before who will they send the points but the people who will see it for the first time they will be doubting and less doubt or more doubt you put in their mind and they will know about you more likely they will send you points. Nothing obvious, I get to the completely different topic a little bit, no but it's a uh, 
it's the odd thing. So when it, when you will see the odds for the semifinal, you will be you 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 can expect that the countries who are on the last places in the odds are starting their marketing. And if you want to help them as funds, you must also share your thoughts about them outside the bubble because the bubble this is a nice thing, but there you change nothing. It's very limited number of very active people. But outside the bubble, there is the math, and this is the most important. And I would say it's not the TikTok bubble also. It's the bubble of 40 plus people and you must catch them. And those people, because those people have money to send SMS, you know, they really would like to be active. So activate them and you as a funds, you can also activate them by sharing your thoughts or information about your artist if you want to do it aggressively. Always the positive works much better, especially when you're deciding if you put money there. If you pay somebody off that he needs to put, they won't do it. Like they can tell you whatever, but they like you will the, the 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 reaction will be the opposite. If you push too much, the reaction it's most likely the opposite. And this is just how I get from this. Oh my god, I love this topic: qualifications, points, mathematics in it, unpredictable things. This is so cool. And I will very soon make you the top list of my top ten, maybe top fifteen songs this year because it's very hard this year for me to create such a list. There is not so many songs I really would say like they are outstanding, which after all, because I think the quality really lowered or Eurovision face changed. I would say that this year, it's a revolutionary year for Eurovision in general, where it's gonna really go. But also I would say that this, not lack of quality, but let's say, the average quality lowered in general. There are more average songs in general. Average. It is. It. 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 it, it, it this is it. It. There is no really like hit, in my opinion. There are more chances for any other country, because no one really stands out, or no one will really extremely stand out. And that's a chance for every country to fight it. No fight is lost. But there must be done a lot of work about it, because then you can say like, hmm. Staging wasn't good, but no, I think this is one part of it. But the big part of it is, especially when you're fighting for those last SMSs spent, must be done in advance. Because this is what can save you from being in the finals or not. And that's just my opinion. Yes, maybe it's also your opinion. Anyway, write me in the comments below what do you think about this crazy video. Let me know what do you think about the odds. If you're a fan of this thing or you're completely have your own own thing. I will then also check scoreboard and next video will be about scoreboards. And of course, when the odds for semifinals will be released, we will talk again. But that's it from me from now. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, ring the notification bell for not missing any other of my videos. Watch my statistical videos, they are crazy. And buy me a coffee, give me a super like, <laughs> enjoy your time and have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Bye.